Okay, so one thing um, that is on my mind today that I'd like to talk about is people who pretend to be your friend to earn your trust and everything else, and then, you know, it turns out later on that they're not. And that, good grief, that, oof, no, 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 go away. That has happened to me a lot, and... I mean, I had, I had a lot of boyfriends gain my trust and, and kind of, you know, screw me over a little bit, but that, that's to be, that was to be expected because I let them, I, I let them do as they please to me because I, I was raised that way. Um, you know, not to argue with men and cause there'd be repercussions and, and there are, <laughs> but, um, depending on the situation, but, um, so I, I let my boyfriends get by with a lot, a lot. And, um, but women, you know, I thought, well, hell, if I can't trust men, you know, at least I can trust women because we've all, you know, been through the same things with them. So, you know, we at least have each other and that's not always true either. Well, the part we go through the same things with men is true, but the part where we have each other isn't always true because women live from, from, uh, such a, a, a baseline of, fear. Uh, life for women is, is, um, a little bit dangerous and, um, is a little bit scary. Um, a lot of the time and they'll ignore this and, and just laugh at us and tell us to shut up and that's fine. It, that, that's not going to go away, but, um, they don't get challenged as much as we do and they don't get challenged by other men and, um, not, not like we do. And, you know, we have uh, a lot more to worry about when it comes to physical safety and, and just plain old physical survival day to day. We have a lot more to worry about because anybody, if I if I didn't have a gun or a dog or an alarm system, anybody could just, you know, climb through this window at night and strangle me and that would just be the end of it. You know, just be some big football player, you know, some some big construction worker who just you know needed to feel like like he was in control, and we just come in and put his hands around my throat and just end it in, in two minutes, and that would just be it. You know, that can happen, and it, for 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 women who don't have any kind of alarm system or protection of any kind, that could happen at any time, and it does happen. So with the way women live from from such a fearful standpoint of life, um, things are, are scary to us and, and we have to be a lot more careful and we get followed and shit like that. And, and you're always followed or threatened by somebody a lot bigger than you, <clears throat> you know, um, well, sometimes you'll have a man your size that talks big, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's always somebody that, that you could never do damage to who, who's going to really get in your face. And, they know that they, and they know what they're doing too. But my point is, um, you know, women, because they, they live from fear like that, they act in such a way, um, to, to constantly protect themselves. And then because they, I think it's because they don't know themselves and they don't know their own personal power, which is why they, they live from fear. Cause they didn't used to a long time ago. It was not that way. Um, but this, the way we're living now and the way we think now with the fearful thing that that's been for the past several thousand years, but it, that's from a certain system that's been in place and not anything that's natural. Um, but I, I, I digress, but, um, because of that, because we're so fearful all the time about people taking advantage of us or, or, or using us or hurting us or killing us. <clears throat> um, which is still, you know, apparently kind of rampant. We have to, it's like all we're left with is, is uh, manipulation and how to, um, you know, manipulate or, or lie to somebody, you know, to get what we need and, and to make sure we survive. And it's real stupid that it has come down to that, but uh, alas, that's what it is. And that's why you see women act up so bad is because they're afraid that they won't survive if they don't do a certain thing. <clears throat> because we know that it's, it's a lot different for us and it's not, it's not easy to, to keep a job because other women get their feelings hurt when your boyfriend's better looking than theirs or you get attention from men and they don't 
or, you know, the manager's flirting with you and they're in love with the manager and, and why can't he love her and, you know, and, sh you know, shit like that. And just dumb shit, just dumb shit. But because they're so damn fearful about everything and because life is not an adventure for women, because men laugh at you, they'll laugh. I've had them do this to me. I've had men who loved me um, look at me like I was stupid and say, life is an adventure. Life is an adventure. And I, I think they're high as a kite. They ha they'd have to be. Because to me, it's not. Well, to them it is because they're, they're, their safety isn't threatened, you know, when they leave the house. They're not in danger of being raped and strangled. That's why life's an adventure to them. <clears throat> and as long as we're getting raped and killed when we leave our house or when we go home, life's a problem. <laughs> not, a, not something fun. It's a problem, not an adventure. <laughs> So, um, is, you know, when the threat is, is always going to be there, you have to always pay attention. Just like in ancient times when people were, were always having to worry about invaders and shit like that. You had to always be on your toes for that. You had to always be ready for that because it was a possibility and it did happen and it happened a lot. And people knew that that was part of life. Oh, well, you know, we could be sitting here, you know, jointing rabbits and somebody could just come up and cut our heads off with their sword, you know, from out of town. Yeah. And it did happen. It did happen. You know, some shit just doesn't change. Who's involved might change, but the act, but the action doesn't change. It doesn't go away. There's always going to be killing. There's always going to be somebody killing somebody else that's like, you know, they they see see as being weaker than them or whatever. That's never going to go away. I mean, it might, but not in this lifetime. So with that being the case, you know, women really act up a lot because they're afraid. Well, people act up because they're afraid, period. That's what it is. But, um, you know, women especially, because they're, they're so afraid of, of being screwed over and they're so afraid of being taken advantage of and they're so afraid of, of, you know, being ruined or whatever. Because life is is that way. They might do, you know, the way Medea did in that whichever one that was where he was um had the anger management thing with Dr. Phil in the end and he was like but you got to get them before they get you before you get gotten or whatever <laughs> like remember that that is is exactly how a lot of women think because they're so afraid of of getting screwed over being the first one to get screwed over and being the first one to be bamboozled you know between them and the other person and so you've got you've got people who You've got women who make friends with other women and, and really get on their good side and really earn their trust and, and, and really get in their life <clears throat> um, just to turn around and really backstab and um, it's sad to see it because we, we really need to be helping each other right now. We really need to be helping each other. And because a lot of shit hasn't changed. <laughs> Women's lib or not. Which I, I don't think helped us that much. But there's a lot of shit that hasn't changed either way. No matter how we storm the streets and demand this or demand respect. You know. And to not be treated like, you know, whores or house, you know, uh, house servants and shit like that. But, um... So they make friends with each other and, and they get, they get afraid of each other, especially when they see another woman doing better than them because the woman who's worried about that has been taught that she's not able to do those things. And so when she sees somebody else doing it, she thinks of that bitch. Who the fuck does she think she is? I'll show her. I'll be damned if she thinks she's going to get ahead of the rest of us because she thinks she's better than us. No, you were taught that you couldn't do those things. That's why you're pissed off you're convinced you can't do it and you're seeing somebody else who, who is doing it. And frankly, you're going to have to get out of her way, number one, because she's going to blast right past you because she's doing her thing. So stay out of it, first of all. Secondly, you know, you need to do some soul searching and figure out who taught you that you can't do shit. Was it your mom, your grandmother, your dad, your brothers, <clears throat> aunts, uncles? Who told you that you can't do stuff. Somebody told you that. Give me a name. And let's just, you know, clear things up here once and for all. 
because the, the jealousy thing especially and, and making friends with another woman just with the plan of learning about her life enough just so you can get yourself pissed off enough to, to turn on her later, you know, the agenda is like astonishing to me because, you know, I've really, I've really had some, some women that I'm thinking of like three or four right now, just off the top of my head over the past decade who I really thought were my fucking friends and they just, they turn on you They're like the devil, you know, and, and it's just so incredible to see it because like all that time that y'all know each other, you share so much about each other. You talk about your children, you know, you talk about men, you talk about spiritual stuff, you talk about your dreams and hopes and aspirations and stuff you want to do with your life and, and you compare notes on things and, and you cry to each other about your boyfriends and all, you know, and everything. <laughs> and, um, you do, you share all of that with this, with this other woman who you think is your friend. And then some time goes by and it's like, she can't handle maintaining the facade a moment longer. It's like, she can't take it anymore. And she just drops the final veil. And all of a sudden you find out she's been against you all along. And all you can think is, well, damn, you know, and you get, you'll get that every now and then. And it starts to make you wonder, okay, you know, can I really trust anybody? Because, you know, I already let my boyfriends push me around and then I, and then so I turned to women you know for for security and then and the, uh, you know like every now and then I've got one of them turning their back on me I'm like shit you know who do I have left nobody <laughs> no one, except your dog but it's like that's how it feels and you know women especially who grew up in that mindset of um well you know you can only do so much you know uh you can only do so much with life you can only go so far you know, the limit, the limitation thing, those women especially suffer from, um, that, that thing that they do where they make friends with somebody and then they turn on them later because that's, that's real, like low self-esteem type shit because you, that person is feeling the need to get your whole story just to turn around later on after they've earned your trust and everything and either use it against you or you know, try to make up some shit about you and say how you're some horrible person, <clears throat> you know, that they, uh, and you've, you've done this and you've done that. And, you know, they just can't stand being your friend any longer. And they're just going to, y'all just have to part ways and, and she wishes you the best. You know, it's like, <laughs> I've, I've had that before. <laughs> I've, I've had, you know, not a whole lot, not like, you know, constantly, but I can think of three or four women off the top of my head who, who really and truly pulled that shit with me. And I, I was astonished because all my life, I have tried so hard to be sincere and to put up people first and, and, and to just be open and honest with people about things. And, and, and I trust people, you know, I trusted people so much, just trusted people. And, you know, I just, I've had that trust thrown in my face so much. And, but I can tell you the women who, who do that backstabbing shit, they're coming from a place of not being sure about themselves because they're so unsure of themselves that they've got to turn around and try to squash you because they're worried about what you're doing instead of what they should be doing. So the fake friend thing, you know, that, that's really hard. That's a real hard lesson from, that's been a real hard lesson for me to learn because it doesn't matter how old you get, they still do it. It doesn't matter how old they get, they still do it. I, um, I know I've told this story before, but it's such a good story. <laughs> I won't go through all the details because it's too much. I, it's too much in one, in one go, but I'll just give you a, a summary synopsis. Is that the word? Um, so when I worked at the funeral home, this is like, I don't know, five years ago. Well, yeah, maybe like five, six years ago, I worked at the funeral home and I did really well and there was a lady there who was training me who was like 60 whatever and she was definitely hardcore like she she was real meticulous but I liked that because I'm kind of the same way not not as bad as she was she would go around every day and if there was anything in any trash can she'd throw it out immediately she there were a lot of times when she was doing something she wouldn't throw in it she wouldn't throw it in the trash can like her trash or whatever 
she would just hold on to it and like go to the kitchen or the dumpster outside and just throw it straight in there. I was like, there's a trash can on every corner in this building. You don't want to just throw it in there. I'm like, we'll just get it later. You know, she was hardcore and had notes, repetitive notes copied everywhere around her office. The same thing everywhere. And I can't function that way. If I'm going to have notes about anything, I, I need to just have one source, maybe one paper source for the originals. And then if it's real important, have scanned copies saved somewhere on a computer or something or a thumb drive or like a memory stick or whatever, you know, so I'll do that, but I'm not going to have a post-it note with the same message on it in 10 different places in one little tiny office. It's just got to go in one place. As long as it's in my face where I see it, I'm fine. But she was hardcore and just like was extremely, extremely, extremely thorough. And it wasn't a bad thing because she, she ran that office like a well-oiled machine. So, I, you know, her system obviously worked. It was just a lot. But I, I liked her anyway. And we had a lot to talk about. And we talked a lot about our lives. And she told me some stories about her life. And and I believed her. I believe what she said. She, um, she had six children. And the husband just like got up and left one day. And I don't know anything. I don't know anything besides that. But she, she, he got up and left one day and cleaned out the bank account and, and just got out of there. And they will do that with, to somebody with children. <laughs> They'll do it to their own kids because I, I've sure heard some some horror stories. Um. Yeah. The, the, yeah. So and it's just it, it's just part of life. But um. You know, and I hate to say that because I'm very against that mindset. But that's just it's just shit that happens. But in her case, you know, she had been through a lot. And so when I got there to that funeral home and everybody realized I was going to be training under her, um, I got calls from women I didn't know who worked in the other branches of that office, right? The other chapels of that funeral home and said, look, you know, I know you're working with Denise, but, um, listen, you know, just be careful because, uh, she'll, she's a real pain in the ass and she will turn on you. <clears throat> now, the times, nine out of ten, nine times out of ten, when I've heard that, I've I've said, well, all right, well, thanks for letting me know, but you know, give me a chance to, to find out for myself. Give me a chance, but thank you for trying to give me a heads up. If you're trying to protect me, I appreciate that because we don't know each other, and you're just trying to be real with me. Thank you. So I, I I will consider it, you know, and I consider that person's efforts to try to protect me. Nine times out of ten, when I've heard that from somebody I didn't know about somebody I just met. It, it was usually right. It was usually accurate. <clears throat> Most of the time, when, when when women warn each other about somebody, they're trying to help them. Uh, now and then, it'll be to get somebody back about something, but it'd be in in vengeance. But with me, when they've done it with me, Miranda, just be careful. You know that is is usually has proven itself to be right because I have sure had my ass handed to me by people that I gave chances to <laughs> apparently I shouldn't have but alas um I was too trusting and it, you know it's my own fault whatever but um you know I got to know that lady and and she was okay and then and for a while there I was like you know I don't know what y'all are talking about y'all are mean you know she she's just some old lady she's nice she's hardcore but you know she, she's had her trials and tribulations like the rest of us but she's okay well let me tell you she she witnessed uh, somebody being nice to me and buying me lunch one day, and it happened to be a man. <clears throat> and um, me and him didn't run off into the sunset and get married or any of that bullshit. It wasn't like that. <laughs> but she was under the impression that it was. He was actually just helping me because he knew I was fucking broke. And he, and he, he bought me pizza. And um, that was very kind of him to do that. And to this day, me and him are still friends. So, um, you know, I don't regret anything, but, um, she saw that and went haywire, like, you know, just pouring water in a robot and, uh, she, she just lost her cool and this woman was old and ha had been married and, you know, lived in a house that was paid for and all her children were grown and she didn't have to take care of anybody and, you know, uh, didn't have to worry about this, didn't have to worry about that, you know, had a good income at home and everything else. And so she had everything that, that I, I wanted. 
and, and everything that I aspired to have someday. And she, and there I was in the position I was in, <clears throat> things were just going wrong for me right and left, like all the time. And I didn't have a lot of friends and, and I had a rough boyfriend at the time that it, uh, I, I'd finally just gotten rid of. And, but I was still having to worry about him because I had to go to the courthouse and get um, whatever kind of no contact and or restraining order I could get. So I was like in the middle of that and things were just really going wrong a lot and I just didn't have any money and you know, and the car was always breaking down on me and shit like that. Every time I put my last $30 in the, in the gas tank, it would quit on me after that. <clears throat> Every fucking time. Every time. It was a Suzuki Forenza. Do not buy a Suzuki. Just don't. Just don't. Don't do it. But anyway. So, um, yeah, horrible. And I didn't pick it out. Someone else did. Horrible choice. In fact, the, the boyfriend that was so awful to me, he picked that out. And he didn't know he was doing either, so I, I had to learn that the hard way. But, um, because I, I paid the price for him not knowing what he was doing. But, um, so she saw that I was, you know, receiving a kindness. And, uh, you know, by somebody that I suppose she, she figured I didn't deserve it from. I don't know. But she went haywire and blackened my name at that place. She just you know, really screwed things up for me. People quit talking to me. Um, my coworkers quit talking to me. I didn't get called in for extra shifts anymore. She was giving my shifts to other people. And I would go through her notebook and see where she, where the funerals and stuff were, where we were supposed to usher at our chapel. And she never called me for those funerals anymore. She'd have other people come in. Other people, other old people who were retired and just needed something to do and didn't need the money. And there I was with a little boy at home, you know, trying to figure out how I was going to get by. You know, I was skipping meals and all kinds of shit, making my own clothes and everything, you know, like it was just nuts. And, and she knew that and still set out to ruin me and, and take money from me and everything, you know, by, by preventing me from, from being able to work, you know, just by telling people that I was screwing <clears throat> and that's just not what happened. You know, that guy was nice enough to buy me lunch <laughs> because he, he knew a lot about me and we talked a lot and, and he, you know, he felt bad for me and he bought me food. I'm not ashamed of that. Considering the shape I was in at that time, the position I was in and how things were, I'm not, damned if I'm going to be ashamed of that for a fucking slice of pizza. Shit. Mm-mm. So, um... Anyway, she, she really, because me and her were two peas in a pod up until she saw me get attention from a man. And after that, it just went downhill and it went downhill so fast, I, I didn't recover. <clears throat> so six months of, of not being able to get shifts um, and six months of no one talking to me. I called the operations manager at some point because there was no HR for that place. It's a privately owned, it's a family owned thing. There's no human resources. It's all their relatives and shit and no one, and, and that's a bad sign because they don't do things right because they let everybody get away with shit. So, um, I called the operations manager and, um, whatever his name was, I forgot, not Tom, but something, I forgot, but anyway, <clears throat> and that guy, I knew some shit on him that I was supposed to know either, because somebody informed me who was there a long time ago when some things went down, and he almost got fired for something that he uh, should have gotten fired for, and, and didn't, because somebody else went in there and did some fast talking, and it to the manager, or the owner, and, and got him out of trouble, <clears throat> Phil did the fast talking and got him out of trouble. He owes his job and his career to Phil at that place. I will say that. I remember that guy. But anyway, so I called the operations manager and I was like, look, I feel bad about br even bringing this up because it sounds absolutely ridiculous, but I've got to explain something to you because there's some things going on that just aren't getting resolved and we're going in circles here. And he said, okay. You know, really didn't want to hear it. Really didn't want to deal with me. I, I didn't do anything there. <laughs> And, um, except keep my head down and my mouth shut and just, you know, answer the phone like I always did. I didn't bother anybody. I worked, you know, uh, on, on the days that I was at the 
office I was supposed to be at. I was in there by myself. So it's not like I created drama every day. I, there was no one to talk to. Because <clears throat> I couldn't get shifts at the other place. Because um, they they talked about me so bad that people quit calling me. So all I had was that one little office on, on her weekends where she was off. And I filled her weekends. So I was there by myself. So was a, there was no one to talk to to start shit with. But I called him and talked to him for like 30 minutes on the phone. And I told him everything. I told him every detail about what happened. About what people were saying. About um, the calls I was getting. People were hanging up on me who worked there, you know. And, um, and how I wasn't getting any hours because uh, she had ruined me so bad there by, by telling people these awful things about me. And it was shit that never took place. That's the thing. When people set out to ruin me, they say shit that never happened. They say shit that never happened. So it's like, you know, I mean, you back somebody into a corner, you know, what do you, I mean, but anyway, so I talked to him for at least half an hour. He didn't do any talking. He just listened. But at the end of it, He's probably sitting there on his computer playing solitaire the whole time, not listening to a word I said. But at the end of it, when I finally finished explaining everything, I apologized again for how silly it was. Which is another thing women need to quit doing is apologizing for telling a story. Y'all need to quit that. Don't feel bad about telling a fucking story about somebody. Especially if the story is actually about you and your struggle. You cannot apologize for telling somebody about something that happened. And if you'd made the whole thing up and it, and it never happened, it'd be different. But stop apologizing for shit that took place. That you didn't instigate. Holy hell. <clears throat> you know, the, the perpetual guilt, you know, thing, that needs to stop. That needs to stop because you're killing yourself with that. So anyway, I told this guy everything. And, um... At the end of the conversation, conversation was just me talking. At the end of me talking, when I was finally done telling him everything, he said, well, um, right, I'm, uh, I appreciate you telling me that. Um, take care. And he hung up on me. He hung up before I could respond. This guy was in his 60s and didn't give a shit if I lived or died. The operations manager... So, I thought if I can't go to you, I'd have to go to the guy that owns the fucking outfit. And he was the mayor. And I was like, how do I get him, how do I pull him aside? I could, but I did, I did talk to him one time. He actually approached me one time when he was there at that office and said, Miranda, um, is there something going on with you and Denise? And I was so relieved I couldn't stand it because he came up to me and was actually checking on me. Lewis Jones was checking on me. I was like, shit. So, this was at Holloman Brown Funeral Home in Virginia Beach, if anyone's wondering. And that guy made time for me. But he, he obviously must have trusted me because he wanted my, my side of the story. And I said, um, I said, well, if you really want to know, because um, some time had passed and nothing had been done about it. I said, well, if you really want to know, I mean, in short, you know, uh, Denise saw Mike, you know, buy me some pizza because I was hungry that day and he knew I didn't have any money. And um, he was nice and, and bought me lunch. And she really just, you know, went haywire and she turned on me. And now I can't get any hours with anybody. And um, people have quit talking to me here. And he looked real confused by that. And he said... Oh. And he didn't really say anything after that. He just kind of like turned away and went back to his office. And I just thought, so you're at the top of this outfit and you, and you won't address it. No one cares. No one fucking cares. Let me tell you. And it could be a generation thing because I've noticed that a lot too. That old people do not feel sorry for us. They do not care if we do well or not. They really don't. Look how angry so many of them are about the... About the um, college loan thing. Look how angry, look how pissed off they are. Do you know why young people are so relieved about the damn college loan thing being forgiven? Because minimum wage is still 725. 
Minimum wage has been seven twenty five for like almost twenty years now. That's disgusting. Because it's impossible to fucking live anywhere. It's fifteen hundred, you know, to have your own apartment. If you got children, you need bedrooms, right? Whether you're getting child support or not, you know, that's gonna be awfully hard. And then the cost of food and then gas to get to work, and then you gotta pay for car insurance and women are charged more for car insurance because apparently, you know, we're the ones killing everybody on the road. It didn't, it used to just be men. It used to just be men that killed people like that on the road. But after a while, women started saying to hell with it. If your behavior doesn't matter, I guess mine doesn't either. And then women started driving bad. So now it's everybody, but it took a long time because it didn't used to be that way. Because for the longest time, it was just men race car drivers. I got to go fast. You know, and now that there's a couple of women sprinkled in here and there who, who just want to go fast. But it didn't, it wasn't like that in the beginning. But, um, you know, that, that place just, just, you know, the, the powerlessness feeling, let me tell you, and that woman doing what she did. And then I tried to get her in the office and say, look, just me and her. And I said, I said, listen, um, I wasn't even facing her or anything. Our desks didn't face each other or anything. We were in an L shape. And I tried to talk to her and say, listen, Denise, you know, something's obviously bothering you. What's on your mind? And when I say she started talking in defense, I never got the story. I never got the, the explanation. Never did. I knew what it was, but I wanted to hear it from her because I wanted her to tell me and, and tell me what was really going on so that I could know if I was at least at least know if I was right or wrong, at least prove me wrong. At least tell me so that I, so that we can both know how wrong I am. And then if I'm not wrong, then you need to drop it. Because I've figured it out. I either figured it out or I haven't. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. At least explain it. Shit. You don't, wanna, you don't want the chance to prove me wrong? Explain something. Explain it. Show me I'm wrong. Since it's such a fucking problem. And if I'm right, you're just going to have to accept it like everyone else. <laughs> you know, because I say shit, I, I come out with shit that people, other people are afraid to say. I'll say it because I know it's got to be said because it is the truth and you can't dance around the truth. It's always going to be there in your face. And, um, but anyway, so, you know, her living in a fearful mindset like that, you know, from abandonment. Uh, way back when um, that she held on to that forever she held on to that until she had white hair and may still be holding on to it for all I know it's not my problem my life went on you know but with, ev with everything she knew about me and, and my struggles and everything we knew about each other and, and how we were just you know trying to get through life well she wasn't she was fine but yeah, just after all that we shared and, and she still stabbed me in the back like that, you know, that, that fearfulness, women are going to have to stop doing that. They're just going to have to stop. And, um, you know, and that's it. So it's just some, you know, an example of, of how that works. And I, I'm still, I don't struggle with, with that per se anymore. You know, that's behind me. That was, that was a few years ago. That, uh, that's over with. Um, you know, there's one a little bit more recently than that, that I, that I do still struggle with because uh, uh, the disappointment, the utter disappointment, just the sheer disappointment. So disappointed. Because somebody who does that to you will be somebody who really has a lot in common with you and shares a lot with you. And, and really connects with you on a lot of levels. And, and that'll be the person who just shoves it up your ass later. <laughs> and it's just so disappointing. <clears throat> I guess what I'm trying to tell you in the end is that number one, um, women who do that, stop doing that. Because you're ruining it for yourself as, as well as everybody else. Because you're making it to where you can't have any friendships with anybody because you're so afraid of being stepped on first. So then, therefore, you got to be the first one to step on everybody so that you don't get stepped on. Well, that's dumb. 
everyone's not set to out to get you you know it's like everyone's not trying to just kill you every day yes we, we live you know we're, we're more in danger you know from from you know getting strangled with the electrical cord and raped you know behind a service station but you know other women aren't doing that to you other women aren't doing that to you and we're not going to so sometimes you just kind of have to get your shit together and quit doing some shit and that's going to be the topic of my next video because this is getting out of hand and um you know but that's why they do that <clears throat> living from a baseline of fear and then and then they turn it on each other why are you doing that you know we have to stick together if if we're going to get through this we have to we have to stick together and that's it and that's just something I believe in because of the things I've been through. Other women have lived different lives and haven't had the struggles I've had. They've had different struggles. So their lessons and their morals are, are different from mine. That's fine. But for the ones who've lived like me and understand what the hell I'm saying, let's let's help each other out a little bit. And and, and let's let's, you know, leave the back the backstabbing thing, you know, outside the door. Let's leave that out. Cause that's getting out of hand. This isn't high school, okay? We're we're, we're older now. So, and I'm getting into another topic though, but I'm going to save that for the next video because that's got to be said too. Um, a little bit of growing up needs to get done, but you know, women feeling powerless, that, that's why they act up. That's why men act up too, that they feel powerless, but you know, um, women uh, are, are going to have to expect more from each other. We've got to expect more from each other because we, we can do better than that. And we know that. And that's not going to slide anymore. It's not going to work. So if you're living it fearfully, you know, you need to really get in check with yourself. Um, and just do some soul search. And if you, if you need help with it, like I always say, get in touch with me. And, and I'll be glad to work with you and, and help you out any way I can. I'm always here for that. <clears throat> um, but if, if you're feeling powerless, you know, you, you may just need to look at your life and look at what you've done, especially if you're doing that kind of shit to other women, you need to cut that out because us, you know, tearing each other down, that's not going to cut it. So that's all I wanted to say for now. Thank you for listening.